What is up you guys? My name is Tater and welcome back to my channel. This is the start of a new series where we go over this entire boat that I am building specifically for this series. And in this video, it's all about how to control those engines. So stay tuned. We're going to get directly into it with a super sweet microcontroller that controls both the engine in this boat as well as the actual throttles themselves, the propellers, the clutches, everything. Check it out. Okay, you guys, well, we're in the workbench. I've got the tutorial boat. This is the tutorial boat because this is the boat I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a lot of this stuff on. But I already have a microcontroller kind of preset up back here. Let's jump straight into it, and I'll show you guys my nodes. So for those of you who don't know, you can add nodes by pushing this button and you can change these inputs and outputs. Uh, but here's what we got. We got throttle lever number one, and that goes to, just so you guys are aware, it's a dual engine boat with dual throttle controls, okay? Uh, get back in here. Throttle number one, we have engine one RPS. Now this is the RPS coming from the engine. We have engine one temp. This is the temperature coming from the engine. Engine one throttle throttle going to the engine, engine one clutch. There's a clutch, is a safety, I'll explain it in just a minute. This is propeller number one. These are variable pitched props. They do simplify a lot of stuff. You don't have to do so much gearbox work and the starters. And then I have the same thing for engine two on this row and here. Okay, now over here, I have throttle up and throttle down. And what these are gonna do is when I push the W key, they're gonna turn those throttles up. And if I push the S key, it's gonna push those throttles down. I also have a seat input. I just have channel two and channel 31. I'm have noted just so I, these are like a mental note later. Channel two is the WS keys. Channel 31 is a space bar, which I'm gonna use for reverse. I have an output for engine data, which is gonna to go to all my gauges. And then I have the key button, okay? So you need all those things to make this work how I'm going to show you how to work it. So let's jump straight into the logic. I have them kind of organized. Um, the donuts are the outputs. They go on the right side and the dots, or the donut holes go on the left side. They're the inputs from, uh, from other systems in the boat. This one outputs two other systems in the boat. But first thing we're going to do is what's called a throttle adapter. So we're going to grab our seat input and bring it down kind of out of the way and these two throttles. Throttle up and throttle down. Okay, and we're gonna grab channel two out of this. So read composite number number two, that's your W and S keys. So hook that together. And when I push W on a helm, in this case a helm or a seat or any controller, um, it outputs a number one. If I push S, it outputs a negative one, okay? So if I'm pushing W, I want those throttles to go up. So I'm going to put, say, if number, if if channel number two here is greater than zero, let's throttle up. And it's zero, so I don't have to put anything, hook anything to it. And then if it's less than, if it's less than zero, throttle down. Okay, throttle adapter's done. All we have to do is hook it up, but we'll get to that here in just a minute. Actually, let's go ahead and hook it up now, and we'll test these systems one at a time. So let's grab our seat data and put it into our seat. Okay, and then let's grab throttle up and put it on both of our throttles. So hold control, click them both for up, and then throttle down. We're going to do the same thing on engine one and engine two down, and we can do a quick test. Now, these are already wired with power. So we don't have to deal with that. But if you haven't put power to your throttles, make sure you do that. I'm pushing W. Oh, one more thing I need to show you guys about this. When you're in... Wow, weird camera glitching. Click on your helm, go to W and S, and turn the throttle or the sensitivity all the way up. Okay, that'll make it react perfectly. And if they're moving up and down too fast, you can adjust the sensitivity here on the throttles themselves. Okay, so if I'm pushing W, it's going to be the same thing as pushing up on both of these. If I'm pushing S, it's going to be the same thing as pushing down on both of these. Okay, back to the controller. Okay, so let's jump into throttle lever one. That's where we're going to start. And we need engine throttle one. Okay. And we're going to use a PID controller. So grab a PID 
regular old simple one here and hook it up to the throttle. Set it to one, that's a really good place to start for this type of a controller. Okay, but I want it to read RPS, okay? I don't want it to read RPS, I want it to adjust the throttle output so that it's reading, if I'm commanding 15 RPS and it'll throttle up until it gets to 15 RPS or throttle down, depending on however it's working. So it'll control that completely on its own. I won't have to do anything. So we need the RPS. Well, let's go ahead and hook the RPS into the process variable. That is what the PID is gonna process from the engine to set the throttle where it needs to be, okay? Now, throttle levers, when you spawn them into a vehicle, they spawn at zero to one. Now you can go in and change them to whatever you want to do, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to assume that your throttle lever is stock and has not been changed. So we're going to change it within the microcontroller. So grab a function block, the F times X, and we're going to go in here and say X times 20, because I don't want that engine to rev over 20 ever. I just want it to have a maximum RPM of 20. Okay, now what about the minimum? So if I hook this up and I rev my throttle up to one, it's gonna rev my engine to 20 RPS. But if I go back to zero, it's gonna tell my, my PID controller that I wanna see zero RPS out of that engine and it's just gonna kill the engine. It's gonna be like taking all the throttle away from a car and we don't wanna do that. So we need to set up an idle. In order to set up an idle, we're just gonna use a clamp and we're gonna clamp the requested RPS minimum of four and a maximum of 20. So now, no matter where I move the throttles, I can only go between four RPS and 20 RPS. And four is a great idle. Okay, we're gonna keep it right there. Now let's add in, well, before I do that, you still need to add power to this. Now, most people would do a constant on signal like this, so it always had power. Or they would hook their key switch directly this is probably my key switch. Yep, key switch directly to this. And if I turn the key off, it would shut the engines off, which is fine if that's how you want to do it. But I want to do one step further and take my temperature into the equation. Okay, so I have a temperature here and I don't want this engine to ever run above 90 degrees Celsius. Not that it ever would, but you know, if the boat flips over and the cooling ports are out of the water, if it gets above 90, I want it to just shut off because damage occurs over 100. So let's grab a less than, and let's say if the engine temperature is less than, let's grab a constant number here and type in 90. Okay. If the engine temperature is less than 90 and, use an and, so if the engine temperature is less than 90 and we have the key turned on, the engine will stay running, okay? Now, what about the starter? The starter is kind of next thing. So let's grab engine one starter. And we don't want it to start if it's above 90. So we're just going to use this node. So if the key switch is on and it's less than 90 degrees, the engine can start. So if I hook it like this, that would start the engine, but the starter would never stop running. And we don't want that. So we're gonna use what is called a timer. And we're gonna use this one, it's a TOF timer, which outputs an on signal when the timer is less than its duration. And the timer will reset when it's turned off. So let's go ahead and hook that up. And I don't want the starter to ever crank for longer than three seconds at a time. So we're gonna add in three on a constant number, this unit's in seconds. So if I hook this up, the timer would crank for three seconds and start and it would be no problem. But what if the engine's already running before three seconds? Well, let's go ahead and hook that circuit up too. So we take a less than and we hook it to the RPS. And if the RPS is less than constant number and three is a good number for here too, so if this is going here, so if the RPS is less than, I'm gonna move these out of the way, it's less than three and all this stuff is working, and 
So we have, if the RPS is less than 3, and the key switch is on, and the temp is less than 90, then hit the starter. Now, this timer is not going to run for 3 seconds, because if the engine gets to 3 RPS, which is going to happen in about a quarter of a second, then it's going to shut the starter off, and we're going to be idling. Okay? Let's grab, now let's grab, um, let's grab the clutch, engine 1 clutch. And engine one clutch is really easy. It can just go to this function times 20. So basically, if I'm applying forward throttle, the clutch engages. If I'm idling, oops, yeah, if I'm idling, the clutch is going to disengage. Okay? Because it's going to be at zero. Okay, now let's do the propeller. Oh, nope, nope, propeller is going to go down here. So we're good on all of engine one. So let's do engine two. In order to do engine two, just highlight everything we just did. Hit control C, hit control V, and paste it up here. Okay. Now we just plug and play. Throttle lever one. So I need throttle lever two to go to this function block. Down here I have engine one temp. Let's grab engine two temp. Goes to this less than. Over here I have engine one RPS. So we need engine two RPS which goes to both of these things. Okay, then this outside this PID controller, I have engine one throttle, so we need engine two's throttle, and plug it into the PID, and then the starter, engine two starter. Just like that. Okay, what do we have left? Oh, engine two's clutch, which also goes same spot on engine two circuit. Okay. Just like that. Now we have down here, we have a few things left. We have propeller one and propeller two. And actually, you don't need both of these nodes. You can just run one. But what we want to do is when we hit the trigger, we want to go in, into reverse. And if we're not hitting the trigger, we want to be in forward. So let's grab another read. This is going to be an on off read and hook it up to the helm. And we're going to change this to channel 31, which is the trigger. I like to use my trigger for reverse. And we're going to use a numerical switch box. And what a numerical switch box does is it has an on and an off value. I'm going to hook them both up to both propellers. Hook it up to both propellers. So if this is off, because I haven't hit reverse, so if this is off, I want to apply a forward pitch to my propeller. So I'm going to use a constant number and propellers work from negative one to one and one is a forward pitch. Okay. And then if I hit reverse, I want it to be in reverse. I can do negative one and then just hook that up like that. That is everything hooked up with the exception of the engine data. So how do we do engine data? Well, we need another composite and we're going to grab a right number. We're going to need four channels, and I'll show you guys why here in just a minute, but we're going to grab these and we're going to move them up into the kind of the middle here, because the way I have my instrument panel set up is engine one, RPS is channel one, and engine one's temp is channel two. Engine two's RPS is channel three, and engine two's temp is channel four. Okay, that is the whole microcontroller done. Now, we have one little problem, and that is, is when we put it in reverse, we are going to be spinning wide open at the same speed we're spinning going forward and the same pitch. And what it's going to do, actually, I'll just show you guys. So what it's going to do, let's hook everything up here first. Let's grab our key switch. Let's grab engine two's lever we need the throttle lever and engine one's throttle lever engine one's rps engine one's throw or temp engine one's throttle engine one's clutch engine one's propeller same on engine two we have rps temp throttle clutch propeller and both of the starters Okay, grab our composite. That's already hooked up. Let's grab the engine data. Hook it to our little guy here, our instrument panel, and it is hooked up 
just like I showed you guys, channel one is engine one RPS, channel two is engine one temp, channel three is engine two's RPS, and channel four is engine two's temp. So it's gonna show us all that stuff. Now electricity's already ran and gearbox is already set, which by the way are at three to two, in case you're wondering. And uh, we should be good, piping's done. And I have a little generator hooked up. So we should be able to let her eat here. Okay, first thing we're gonna test. Throttles are working up and down. Yes, start it up. Give it a little bit of throttle, and I don't have a right engine turning on. I didn't even I don't even think it tried to start. Is my starter hooked up? Yep. I bet I forgot to hook up the key to engine two. I did. Key switch also has to go to engine two. There we go. And let's start it up again. I heard both engines click that time. And if I throttle up, we are rolling. If I tap spacebar, I go in reverse. But as you can see, my props are wanting to come out of the water. So there's a couple ways we could fix this. We can either limit the RPS, or we can just change how these propellers function. Okay? So let's jump in here. Now, it's just going too fast in reverse. So if I go down here and if I turn my reverse on, which is my trigger, the on value, and I change this to like a negative 0.25, then I only get like a quarter of the amount of thrust in reverse. Okay. It's going to bounce off the rev limiter, but it's actually okay. I'm not that worried about it, but I'll show you guys how to get it off the rev limiter too. Look at my space bar. Hey, my props aren't out of the water. I'm still doing 30 miles an hour in reverse, so it's running pretty good. Now if I idle down, all the way down here, and if I look at my engine, they're at 392 RPS. Temperature looks good. And if I go back here, I should be able to see that my propellers are just barely turning. That's what the clutches are for. Okay, so these clutches stop those propellers from turning in case you're on a mission and you walk off the back of your boat and get chopped up in the propellers because they will absolutely destroy you and ruin your career mode right then and there so that's why we put the clutch in that's all the clutches are doing is just engaging and disengaging they're not actually clutching anything because it's a boat so one thing i want to demonstrate is the importance of having that temperature hooked up into your engine controllers and if you get up to go to the bathroom get a drink of water or whatever go afk and you come back to something like this watch what's going to happen temperature's just climbing through the roof and if i don't have a way for that to shut itself off what do you think's going to happen it's going to explode and the boat's going to light on fire and by the time you get back from doing whatever you're doing your your boat's burned to a crisp so Having something like this will at least prevent the boat from catching fire. All right, you guys. Well, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to do a bunch of videos like this where it's really simple quality of life type of things to make a good search and rescue boat. And you can use that on any engine you want. It'll work just fine. Uh, modulars, obviously, not so much. They're a whole lot different. But we're going to start with the basics in this series, and we're going to work, work our way up to more advanced. So hit the subscribe button if you want to see more really good quality of life things and if this video helped you at all or if even if you hated it hit the thumbs up and leave a comment telling me how bad it was whatever you guys think uh thank you guys for watching catch you on the next one